I'm Maria Artunduaga. I'm an assistant professor in the Pediatric Radiology Division at UT Southwestern Medical Center. And I'm going to talk to you about pediatric e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury, which stands for EVALI, and the challenges in the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'd like to thank our SNE News for inviting me to share this in this blog. My colleagues and I published our work in radiology in March 2020 that focused on the chest radiographic and CT findings of pediatric EVALI. And I also spoke at RSNA 2021 about the imaging highlights of this diagnosis. So to start with some background, EVALI is a toxic inhalational injury that caused an outbreak across the US immediately prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. By early 2020, the CDC reported that about 15% of all hospitalized cases accounted for patients that were younger than 18 years of age. Since that time, the cases of EVALI have markedly decreased, but they can still be encountered. And this is of particular importance amongst the adolescent population. Several investigations have uh, shown the characteristic imaging findings and the patterns that can be found with pediatric EVALI, but in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, it's important to mention that these findings can potentially overlap with the imaging features of COVID-19 pneumonia. So what are e-cigarettes? E-cigarettes or vaping products, which are colloquially known as vapes, are battery powered devices that aerosolize flavors, tetrahydrocannabinol, which stands for THC, nicotine and additives by heating a liquid. They were initially introduced in 2007 as a safer alternative for smoking cessation. During the outbreak, most e cases were associated uh, with THC containing products, particularly those that came from informal sources and specifically the diluent vitamin E acetate was strongly linked. So it's important to recognize that e-cigarettes have become the most common tobacco product used among adolescents since 2014. The National Youth Tobacco Survey, which is a, a school-based survey that collects information regarding the tobacco use in students from the sixth through the 12th grade, showed that the use of e-cigarettes peaked in 2019. There were about 5.4 million students at that point in time. That represented about 28% of all high schoolers and about 11% of all middle schoolers. Since that time, the use has decreased, but it remains concerningly high uh, of about 2 to 3.5 million students in the most recent years. As per the CDC, the adolescent population is at risk due to several factors. Uh, most e-cigarettes contain nicotine, which is a highly addictive substance that makes future use of regular cigarettes and other drugs more likely. In addition, nicotine can harm the uh, developing adolescent brain. And there are other factors that are listed on the CDC website. So when we talk about the clinical presentation of pediatric Valley, it really encompasses a spectrum of nonspecific symptoms that are constitutional, respiratory, and gastrointestinal. So it's important to mention too that um, gastrointestinal symptoms can be the sole initial presentation in, in some of these patients. Other uh, important information to mention um, regarding the clinical presentation is that typically these patients are previously healthy. Some of them may not, may not disclose the use of vapes initially. And some of them also have psychosocial stressors such as uh, substance use and mood disorders. Regarding the imaging findings of pediatric EVALI, these are reflective of acute lung injury, and they include on chest radiograph and CT symmetric ground glass opacities that may have a basilar consolidations. It's also important to mention that on chest radiograph, these findings may be subtle or that sometimes the chest radiograph may be normal. And so this um, highlights the importance of CT as a much better modality to depict and further characterize these findings. Other uh, important findings um, based on imaging for CT is the presence of subpleural and peribronchovascular sparing, reversed halo or atoll sign, centrilobular ground glass nodules, lymphadenopathy, and pleural diffusions. Regarding the spectrum of patterns that we can find in pediatric EVALI patients include most commonly uh, organizing pneumonia and diffuse alveolar damage. Others um, have reported a hypersensitivity and pneumonitis-like pattern. 
It's also important to mention uh, regarding those patients that we were mentioning that can present with isolated gastrointestinal symptoms. Some of these patients may undergo initial workup with abdominal pelvic CT and the um, really sole uh, finding is the incidental pulmonary abnormalities that may raise the possibility of um, EVALI or, or some long um, etiology to explain the clinical presentation for these patients. And so the bottom line is that if we see these findings that are uh, typical, um, as as radiologists, we should really raise the possibility of EVALI as a diagnostic consideration. So now when we talk about COVID-19, um, regarding clinical presentation and imaging findings, really they're very similar to EVALI. So for, for clinical presentation, the symptoms can be nonspecific, such as what we just discussed on um, our EVALI patients. The presence of leukopenia has been described, but really amongst the hospitalized adult population, as it's been shown to be rare in children. Regarding imaging findings for COVID-19 pneumonia, typically what we'll see is bilateral ground glass opacities, although sometimes they may, may be rounded. Uh, they may be of lower low predominance with or without consolidation, so it's pretty similar to Ivali. Um, and then regarding the distribution, it can be central or peripheral. One um, finding that is important to mention is that on chest radiograph and CT for patients that are young uh, children uh, with COVID-19 pneumonia, they may only show bronchial wall thickening and peribronchial distribution. For COVID-19 pneumonia on CT, what we may find is peripheral and subtural distribution, which um, it's different from the patients that we uh, just discussed on the findings on the EVALI patients. Halo sign can also be found on COVID-19 pneumonia, which is rare to um, encounter on patients with EVALI. And so in summary, as we reviewed, EVALI is an important um, consideration to include if we see the typical findings. And so the bottom line, as I mentioned, is if we um, see some of these findings, we should raise the possibility and have a direct communication with our referring clinicians so that they can further inquire the patients to see if they have any use of um, e-cigarettes or vaping products. And again, as, as we just discussed, it's important to keep in mind that the clinical and the imaging findings of Ivali and COVID-19 pneumonia can uh, overlap. Thank you so much for your attention.